Let's turn our Bibles to book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, familiar verses. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. The title of the message is, Don't underestimate your adversary, the devil. Don't underestimate your adversary, the devil. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary... The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we first of all thank you for marvelous salvation. Thank you for the blood we should shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away, past, present, future. Thank you for this blood-bought church. Thank you for allowing us to gather together to praise you, worship you, and to listen to your word. Amen. We ask you, Lord, that you fill the pastor with your Holy Spirit, given the liberty and the power and the authority to declare your word to us. Please open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, as well. And help us not to be distracted by the things that are happening in our lives or the things that are happening in the world, but help us to wholly give ourselves unto your word. Protect us from devil's attacks. And let all things that are said and done be for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So don't underestimate your adversary, the devil. One thing you have to realize as a Christian is that we are in a spiritual warfare. Once you lose sight of that, then you're going to lose the battle. Every day is a spiritual battle. Every day is in warfare. And when you're in a war, you always have to fight. When you're in a war, you have to be prepared. When you're in a war, you have to always watch your back, as they say. Devil, he wants nothing better than for you to turn into a very, very worthless Christian. Devil wants you to turn into someone who brings bad name to Lord Jesus Christ. Devil wants you to have that testimony where you lead people to him instead of Lord Jesus Christ. It's been only three weeks in the first year this 2024, first month, I should say. Man, how is your spiritual life right now? 21 days today. I mean, have you gotten closer to the Lord in 2024? I mean, have you been reading more Bible? Have you been reading, uh, I mean, more of the, I guess, you know, godly books? Have you been watching more of godly stuff? I mean, have you been praying more? Have you been witnessing more? I mean, all these things have to have improved thus far. But if you haven't, you know, you could definitely give credit to your flesh, right? You could give credit to the world, and especially you could give credit to the devil. Devil does not want you to do anything for the Lord. And if you don't understand if this is, you know, do or die spiritual battle that we're in, then you're going to always underestimate your enemy. When do people usually lose the battle? Many times when they underestimate their enemies. You think that you have more bigger army, stronger technology, and all that stuff. But sometimes, stronger people does not win. Many times, stronger people does not win. People who win are people who do not underestimate and people who are well prepared every single day of the battle. Imagine if you have a watchman watching for the whole military and they just have a one-off day. What happens? They lose the war. Yes. I mean, think about it. You know, we have world wars. You know, we have wars going on still. And you say, okay, for the last 100 days, I didn't see anything out in the field. I didn't hear anything. I didn't even feel anything. Okay, so, you know, my shift is really, really, you know, tiring time of the you know, morning from 
one in the morning all the way to say 9 a.m. So I'm just gonna take a good nap today. You know, it's not gonna happen today. Isn't that your mindset all the time? Yeah. You know, Christians, your mindset is always, it's not gonna be today. It's not gonna be today. And one day that's gonna be that day. And imagine if the enemy attacks at that time when you are sleeping. You're gonna be responsible for the whole country's defeat. You're gonna be responsible for countless lives lost because you did not stay awake, because you weren't vigilant, because you weren't sober. And many times in Christian walk, this is what's happening. For if there's like one who's doing really well in watchmen, I mean, standing as a you know, watch of the enemy, nine Christians are always failing, right? You hear all this good preaching. You hear this teaching. You read the word of God. You even get convicted, but you don't do anything about it. When you don't do anything about what you've heard, you're always going to go back to your previous state, but you're going to get worse. You're going to get worse and worse and worse. As you read the Word of God, as you see the history of Israelites, when they refused to listen to the Word of God, what happened? If they were 80% wicked, they turned to 100% wicked and above and beyond. The worst thing is that they become worse than the heathen that Lord said, do not follow. As Christians, what's going to happen to you is that you say, I'm never going to turn out like this worldly people, devilish people, Satan worshipers, liberals out there, humanists out there, but you become just like them. And you have become just like them. For some of you, your mindset is so messed up that you have constantly compromised the word of God. God is not the God anymore in your life or in your heart's throne. It's the world. You put the idols in your place. And who can you credit? It's the devil. Just remember, if you don't recognize that each day, each moment, even right now, that you are fighting your adversary, the devil, when you lose sight of that, then you're going to lose. I mean, he's constantly attacking you. He's, you know, he might not be attacking full force, but he's constantly looking. He's constantly checking. He's constantly seeing what's going on. You think your secret thing's going to be always be hidden? You know what? It's going to be revealed. It's going to be revealed very soon. I'll tell you that. And especially if the Lord's going to come back soon, it's going to be really, really put in a bright light. And all the secret sins that you're doing right now, you'll be revealed. If you don't get right with the Lord, then what's going to happen? The scary thing about God is that if you don't get right, he's going to let you fall into your destruction. Look at the examples of Pharaoh. Why did God harden his heart? Because he rejected instruction, correction, reproof over and over and over. Why were Israelites blinded? Why were they Blinded by God, when you read Romans chapter 11, because they constantly reject, rejected the prophets. They constantly rejected the word of God. So eventually, Lord goes, okay, you want to know the fruit of your disobedience? You want to know the fruit of your wickedness? You want to know the fruit of all the rejections that I've been trying to convict you so that you could change? Okay. Blinded. That's why some of you, it, it will never get through to you anymore. I mean, Lord will chastise you as a loving child. But even then, that doesn't work for some of you because you backslid and you've gone too far. But there's grace still. There's still mercy there. You could still get right with the Lord. But if you don't, I mean, from my personal experience, Lord's going to expose everything. And you know who's going to make sure that that happens so that you lose all your testimony? Your adversary. The devil's going to make sure it happens. And it's, it's going to be a horrible, horrible day. That's why if you are living in any sin right now because you think that I could get away with it, you better wake up. Yes. If you don't wake up, you're going to be blinded by your own sins. I mean, let's go to Romans chapter 11. Let's look at some example. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 7 and 8.
Romans 11, verse 7. The Bible says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. What's this election about? We're not talking about predestination. These are the people, these are the Jewish people who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior in this church age. Look at verse 5. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant. Who's this remnant? We're talking about Israelites, few Israelites who trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior during this age. According to the election of grace. Once you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're under the election of grace. So you had to take some action. It's not God says, you go to hell, you go to heaven, like those Calvinists say. No, you trusted Christ. That's why you're predestined to be conforming to the image of Christ. Verse 8, and if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. So what happened? So they know the Messiah, Israelites. And all these Pharisees and Sadducees, they see Jesus Christ. All these Israelites see his miracles, everything he's performing. All these prophecies coming true and fulfilled. Some believed. Some believe still now. But majority rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Then what happened? God made them blind. It's like, okay, you're going to constantly reject? Okay, just time to blind you. As Christians, when you use a spiritual application, you constantly reject God's reproof, rebuke, through the preachings, through the word of God, through the circumstances that's happening in your life where you're living in sin, but it's still hidden by grace of God. You continue, then you're going to end up just like that. Obviously, you're not going to burn in hell if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. But according to Galatians 6, 7, you're going to reap what you sow. All the sins that you've sown, you're going to reap once and for all. And those of you who are hiding, you know, it's funny. When you're hiding your sin, you think that no one knows. Man, but God reveals it. And when it's time for you to tell the truth to God and his people, and if you still hide, and if you still don't tell the truth, then what do you think is going to happen to you? You know, God wants honest person. God wants honest coward. What does that mean? You should be fearful of God. Fear of the Lord is the most important thing right now for those of you, especially running away or trying to hide from your sin because the devil has just blinded you. And you yourself have blinded yourself from all the sin that you're doing. You know, that's why there's never a spiritual growth in your life. You're no better. <laughs> Don't kid me. I've gone through it. You're like, you're like no better than when you first got saved for some of you. And for some of you, you have been like closer to the Lord since like 10 years ago, five years ago. Why? Because you keep on letting the devil win. I mean, why do you always let the devil win? Right? Devil is not an influence. Devil is a real person, real being. He wants nothing worse than to just stomp you, destroy you completely. Devil wants worship. Why did he go against the Lord? Why? Because he wants that worship. Yes. He doesn't care about much worship from all these wicked reprobates out there. He, he's, they're already his child. Right. He wants worship from the saved so-called Christians who doesn't know the right doctrine and living the life that's pleasing him. Yes. You know what would be the worst? You know, as a human being, when do you feel the worst? I'm not talking about the pain, right? Physical pain, right? But when do you feel the worst? When you get betrayed by someone. That's, what, that's probably the worst feeling you could ever get, Right? You know, especially someone that you trusted with your whole heart. Someone that you trusted with your whole being. And then turn around and they betrayed you. 
Man, that is, if you've gone through it, people, you know, you know that feeling. And that's feeling that probably one of the worst feelings you ever have to go through in your life. But Lord has gone through it over and over, right? With you and me. Yes. Don't look at Judas's career. Look at yourself. Amen. You are that betrayer. Amen. I mean, you're the one who's always like, Lord, I'm going to do this, do that. You come up to the altar. You come make commitment. And you go turn around. And you do exactly that's against him. Yes. Right? And I'm going to go through a few of those things. And if you're doing those things, then you better stop. And you better get right with the Lord. Or else, Lord just has to test, chastise you, right? You know what's the scariest thing about the Lord? I mean, He's to be feared, right? He's jealous God. When time is up, there's no let up, there's no let go. When Lord says time is up, time is up. When at that time, you could do all you want. You could be crying out, crying your eyes out, do your crocodile tears for some of you. He says it's over. I gave you so many chances. Lord, but, you know, I'm your child. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this, because I love you. I don't want you to get any worse. You know, some of you think that, oh, man, when my Christian walk is stopped, the Lord doesn't love me. The Lord loves you. That's why you're being stopped at what you're doing. He knows that you're closer to your permanent destruction. I'm not saying burning in hell, destruction here on earth, yes. you know. Closer than ever before. And you can't be hiding under the, you know, sheet of, oh, King James Bible. Bible-believing church. Local church. Oh, Bible-believing YouTube channel. That's not going to work. Lord's just God. He's going to judge you fairly, just like any other unbelievers. Except that you won't burn in hell. You know, thank God for that. Right? But thank God for His grace and mercy that for those of you who are still living in sin, He's still covering it. As in, he hasn't brought it up to light where you're going to lose your testimony once and for all. And when at that time, many people, you know what happens? Their heart is already wicked. They're like, oh, forget it. Forget that church, right? I don't need that church. There are plenty of churches out there who accept my compromised ways. I'm not saying, you know, people who's not here are like that, but some are, right? Yes. They don't want correction. No. You and I hate correction, don't we? Right. If you don't like correction from your parents, you are not going to like correction from God. Amen. So embrace your correction from your parents if they're Bible believers, right? Yes. Children or adults. You know, our parents, if they're still alive, right? They always look at you as their little child. Yes. If you're 50 and your mom is 80 and they're still correcting you according to the word of God, listen to them. Amen. Your dad is 90 and you're 75. I mean, not 70, that's too early. <laughs> right? You're like 60. And then, you know, he's correcting you. Listen. Amen. According to the word of God. Yes. Obviously, they know what they're doing. Which is all about your heart problem, brethren. You have to understand that when Holy Spirit is working in your heart, convicting you, you have to receive it. Yes. And you have to change according to it. Don't be hearers with dull ears. You've got to be hearers with the open mind, just accepting it. Don't think that this message is for someone next to you. Me. People always have made that mistake. Yes. You know what? It's not for me. Because you're already blinded. <laughs> if you already said it's not for me, you're that person. Amen. Guarantee you're that person because you want to hide your sin. There's no way, even if I show any emotion from my face, you know, that this is convicting me, you know, someone's going to look at me. Who wants to look at you? <laughs> Besides from me up here, you know. I mean, who, why do you even care about what other person is looking at you? That's, right. That's what the devil wants you to do. Yeah. You know, devil in a subtle way, always trying to make you think not about what God thinks, not about what the Bible thinks, not what about Lord thinks, not what about Holy Spirit thinks. He always wants you to think about what other people are thinking. That's why you never can get right with the Lord. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, hey, hey, my sister is looking at me. My brother is looking at me. My mom, my dad, you know, that brother, that sister. Man, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, but I know they're looking at me. I mean, don't be a fool. You're not that important. You know, you're not that special. No, you are not. 
Again, don't take it out of context, right? You know, you are all special members of the body of Christ. Amen. But when it comes to pride, when it comes to being humble and humility, you have to realize you're not less than nothing. You're just a sinner saved by grace. And you have a lot to get right about. Yes. I have a lot to get right about. Until the day of the rapture, until we go see the Lord, we have, we're like that ultimate work in progress, right? You and I are like Frankensteins. <laughs> we are messed up beings created with so many worldly things, devilish things, selfish things that are created together. Amen. We need to change it. Yes. And it's from many, many different parts of the world, many, many different parts of wherever it is. You're going to have a bunch of stuff that as a Frankenstein, you have to take it out so that you could become more like Christ. You've got to work out your salvation. You have salvation, but until you get that body, perfect body, day of redemption, you've got to work it out. You've got you to gotta be that Christian that's exemplary. You've got to be that Christian who's always aware of devils closest to you, other than Lord Jesus Christ, who's living inside of you. And you have to be aware that enemy is always there. As I speak, devil's right there. Yes. Devil's right in here. Trying to make sure to work in your mind that just like majority of the Christians who's here and listening, don't change. Do not change. That's devil's message. Yes. Always. Don't change. I love the way you are. Don't ever change, right? He uses all of this worldly stuff. Don't change. People who say you need to change, you know, they're just, you know, hardcore conservative, you know, Bible thumpers. They don't love you at all, you know. I just love the way you are. You know, that's, that's the worldly message that devil's telling you. Yes. You and I have to change all the time. Amen. You and I have to change every single moment. Because without it, we just, you know, we never stay at the same place, I'll tell you that. We always go back. If we don't push forward, we're always going to go back. That's the Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You have to withstand the devil. The devil's constantly attacking you. You have to fight the devil. If you don't, then you're going to be pulling back, and he's going to eat you alive. That's why you have to understand, you know, devil will come at you in many, many different ways. So we're going to look at some of the things, some of the spiritual lessons that we could learn from Israelites. Let's turn to the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. You know, people say New Year's resolution. Number one is what? Diet and exercise, right? We have to exercise by fighting. Your exercise as a New Year resolution, as a Christian, should always be fighting. Fighting the spiritual battle. Amen. And for some who have gotten some victory, if you've gotten it, you think too easily, then I guarantee you, you've already underestimated the power of your adversary. Yes. If you think any victory has come too easily, then you've underestimated. God works step by step. If you ever look at your life, if, if you ever look at Word of God, if, you, if I ever look at my life, God works perfectly one step at a time. He gives victory one at a time. He doesn't go like, okay, you took two steps. I'm going to give you, you know, 200 steps all at once. No, it doesn't work like that. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17. Let's see what happens when the people reject. They reject God's word. They reject God's prophets. They just reject God's instruction and rebuke and reproof. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 7. What's happening here now? Let's look at it. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. So it started happening now. You know, the sins for which Israel was carried into captivity 
what's happening. You see the order of degeneration. You see the order of how wicked Israel has become. Spiritually speaking, this is the order that you become, or you have become already. So first thing is what? They started fearing other gods. Yeah. As Christians, you should not fear anything other than God. Amen. Are you fearing your work? Are you fearing your education? Are you fearing media? Are you fearing anything other than Lord Jesus Christ? Are you fearing communists? Are you fearing Catholics? Are you fearing Presbyterians? Are you just fearful of human beings who you think that has a control over your materialism, your physical well-being? Preach. Are you just fearful of anybody who thinks that who could harm you in any way? How many times have I spoken and you've heard? Devil cannot attack you or harm you unless he gets permission from God. Yes. Think about that. When he went to attack Job, he had to get permission from God. Did you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then are you his child? Yes. Why are you so fearful of other gods? Why are you fearful of idols? Anything you put at your heart's throne other than Lord Jesus Christ, they're all idols. Amen. Money, is that your idol? Are you fearful of money? If you're doing your best and you're not stealing, you're not a thief, and you're living diligently, God's going to fear your needs no matter what. Why are you fearful? Because something in you is sleazy, that's why. You want to make money, not with your hard work, you're trying to make money against the word of God. Maybe you want to gamble. You just want instant wealth, right? Maybe you want to steal from your companies or somebody when they're not watching. And that has become your ultimate idol. Love of money is root of all evil, yes. right? You don't fear the Lord. You start fearing worldly system. You're fearing the devil. You're fearing your flesh. And now all you're about is, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, go with the, what the worldly system is doing. We live in this system, but we don't have to be following it of it, right? You know, we still got to make our living. We still do our best. Yes. But if this becomes your God, man, you have already, I mean, you've started your downhill a long time ago. Look at verse 8. Now they fear other gods. And then what happens? Verse 8. And walk in the statues of the hidden. Wow, now you start following worldly ways. Yeah. You start following the worldly ways, right? Do you know why? You know, ask anybody who went to PBI. When they go to PBI, Dr. Ruckman expelled people who went to movie theaters. What does Hollywood symbolize the most? The world. The statues of the world. What comes out of Hollywood? Worldly music, sex, violence, yes. drugs, gender ideology yes. now, homosexualism, lesbianism, everything in between. All, All those things. Amen. And you're paying money Come on. to support that? Right. If you're doing it as a Bible believer, shame on you. That's right. Whatever you do at home, it's up to you. But you yourself showing your, you know, I was going to say your ugly face, because you are ugly, right, at that moment especially. You yourself showing your face, and then you think that God's going to let you get away with it. He never does. Amen. You've been caught. You've already been caught. Why are you messing with fire? Right? Worldly movies, going to theaters. Oh, my mom wants to go. Tell her it's no good. My son wants to go. My daughter wants to go. Tell her no. Oh, my wife wants to go. I mean, you have no cojones, man? You live according to your wife's rule? You're the head of the household. Where are the pets? I mean, think about it. 
There's God, Lord Jesus Christ. There's man, woman, and children. Amen. I mean, a house crumbles when woman is the head of the household. Yes. And godly woman already knows they're to submit to the husband who submit themselves to the Lord. Amen. If husband do not submit themselves to the Lord, then forget it. Over. Why would your wife follow you? Right. Don't expect it. You're a hypocrite. Yes. Right? But as a man, do your job. Woman, you got to do your job. Yes. Just know your responsibilities. And children, obviously, you shouldn't be trumping over your Bible-believing parents. What's wrong with you, right? right? As I was reading Exodus, I've read it again and again, right? Like when it comes to Exodus 20, 21, 22, you know, the laws are there now. You disobeyed your parents? Man, you should have been stoned to death. Literally. You're living under your parents' roof? You're that rebellious kid? Back in the day? You're dead already. Amen. But thank God that you know, you're here That's living right. in this you know, age of grace, right? Yes. I said, you know, they started you know, following the idols of heathen. And what did they do? They started following the statues of heathen, right? Their moral is the standard of the world, not the standard of the Bible. That's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to have this you know, humanistic love, right? It's not a love. You know, when you tell somebody they're burning in hell, or they're going to burn in hell, that's the greatest love, yeah. right? Yes. Christ showed that love to you. Oh, it's not a love, you know, when all these babies die. You know, sometimes it's better for them because they'll wake up in heaven, Woo. right? Sure. I mean, oh, you know, it's not love, you know, even though you live such a wicked life, you got A's, you know, but God shouldn't give A's, right? What? Is he going to accept all forms of sin? He's too holy for that, right? That's why if you're following the statues of the heathen, you've already underestimated the devil. Devil's got into you. Yes. You have that liberal way of love, right? You know, instead of the word of God. Let's just accept that sin here and there, you know. You know what? No one's watching us going to movie theaters. It's okay, right? It's just you and me, right? Man, but you come out in the social media. I mean, someone's interviewing the, you know, people there, and you're just in the back, just walking in and out. Don't tell me you're going in there to witness. <laughs> you went in there to watch the movie. Amen. I <laughs> mean, how foolish do you think you are? Not me. And some people, you guys just don't care, right? But don't bring that to church, though. Yes. Right? I mean, you're, you're going to be a bad example. Unless you're like Jade, or even the, someone who's younger than Jade, everyone else is like, have responsibility to be an example of someone who's younger than you. Yes. And if they see you coming out of movie theater, and I don't even know what movie you watch. Don't even tell me, right? You probably watch some Reddit art junk, right? Peach 13 is a junk too nowadays. Go to 50s, 60s, even 80s. The PG 13, that would have been like a NC 17, they call it, only for adults. But now it's so deteriorated. Language is very foul, you know, oh, yeah. and a bunch of everything. And then you're like, oh, yeah, because my wife wants to go. Oh, my husband wants to go. Oh, we just want to kill time. Wow. Is that how you kill time? Going to movie theaters, Christian? And then be the bad testimony to the whole world? How in the world, people who see that you're a movie theater goer and then say when you preach to them or teach them about against the world, they're going to listen to you? You're for Hollywood? You're for worldly music? You're for fornication, adultery, whoremongering? You're for drug use? You're for homosexuality? You're for transgenderism? You're for gender ideology? You're for everything. Everything's wrong against the word of God. Amen. And you're saying, hey, guys, turn your Bibles to you know, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians, Galatians. Wow. You're a fool. Yes. If I'm you, man, I'll be scared. Man, I went through that stage, man. I'm not perfect. But God will deal with you. God never lets you get away with anything. Why would you think God will? 
when he sends a soul to hell for our eternity, and they live a holier life than you. They sinless. They try to help people. They sincerely, but in a wrong way, follow the Bible with wrong doctrine. And God says, do you have Jesus Christ in your heart, Lord and Savior? No, 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 no. It's a faith and works, Lord. You know, that's how I was taught. You know, I believed in you, but I also trusted in you know, doing good works, Holy Spirit experience. Depart from me, we get into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. That's what they're going to hear. And you, Christian, you think that, oh, just because I received Christ, you know, I'm, I'm scot-free. Yeah, you're not going to burn in hell. But don't think that anything else will be different when it comes to judgment. You're going to be judged. God has to. Judgment instead of Christ is there for a reason. That's why certain things does not work in your current life. God can bless you for it. I can never understand Christians who think that if I give up the word of God, I'm going to rule the world. Even though I can't sell my soul to the devil anymore, and I'm going to sell everything else to the devil. And the devil is going to give me a million bucks, billion bucks. He promised me, you know. And then they live the worst life. You know, they don't have a, they can't go to right Bible living church because they're too proud to admit it. Their work, life, home is all a mess. You know, you have the wrong spirit combined. You know, so you're constantly rejecting the Holy Spirit, right? Because your will is not to serve the will of God. Your will is to serve you, your family, and the devil. So you're going downhill. Why? Because you are worshiping false idols. And you are following the statutes of the heathen. Right? You better be careful. You've got to get away from TV. You've got to get away from all these wicked things, music, everything. Amen. There was reason why devil was, Lucifer was in charge of music. Universal language. And like, oh, you know, it's just one thing. You know, it's just K-pop. Tell that to Pastor Kim. Right? <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just a, it's a love song, you know. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up, so, you know, you know, me and my, you know, spouse have to listen to it, you know. You're a fool, right? Yes. Like, oh, you know, you know it makes me feel better. I, yeah, it makes your flesh feel better, but it grieves the Holy Spirit. I mean, if you can get, if you cannot get spirit-filled, if you don't feel better by listening to hymns, I don't know, you, something's wrong with you. Yes. Either you're completely backslidden, or, I mean, you might even have to check your salvation. Amen. Right? Maybe you just have the wrong spirit. That's because right. spirit, I mean, spirit lusts against the flesh. That's what the Bible says, right. right? If you don't get any sense of conviction, grief, you know, when you're at a movie theater, when you have worldly music playing in your ears, you know, you know when you're doing this wicked stuff, well, you better check. I mean, you could, you could have been backslidden to the point, like, you know, there's no more. Like, you're so blinded, I don't know. Maybe God has to super, super chastise you. But what happens, though, when that day, after that day, you're going to have scar for your life. And you might never get back to where you could have been. Right? Because someone else already took your place. That's what God does. Right? You're not going to follow God's will. Don't think that you're the only special person who can do. God is the other person. God always has another person, another person. See, Isaac was, I mean, Elijah was rejected, dejected, you know. But God said, man, there's 7,000, your own people, who did not bow their knees to the Baal. Man, what do you think? You're not going to do it? It doesn't matter. If I'm not going to do it, you think our church is going to disappear and everything? If it's Lord's will, important, Lord's going to have another person. I can't be foolish. I'm the only one who could do this, right? You teach Bible, you're not the only one who could teach Bible. There are many other people who could teach the Bible. God doesn't look at your knowledge. God doesn't look at how smart you are. God looks at your heart. Amen. Are you willing to do it from your heart? Not compromising yes. with the world. What happens if I were to compromise, I have idol in my heart as money, I start going to movie theaters, and then I come and preach, 
like nothing's wrong. And then suddenly, the news comes out. And then people don't even come to our church, but they started doing, oh, that guy was right there. That guy was there. Oh, he's preaching against all this worldly stuff. He's right there. How's he going to explain that? I'm done. I'm done. How can I, with right face, stand here and preach against sin when I'm participating the same way? You have a different standard. Do you understand, Bible believers? Don't think of yourself as same as every single people out there. Amen. When you got saved, your status changed. Yes. You're a child of God. Now you are also enlisted in his army. Woo! You have to follow the rules and regulations yes, of the word of God. If you don't, military police is going to come. <laughs> but you know what? But you know what? God, he does that thing. He might use the preachers. He might use the word of God. He might use some circumstances in your life amen, amen. to get your attention. Yes. If you're not going to get right with the Lord, don't blame me. Don't blame your brethren. Always blame yourself. Yes. Bob Jones Sr. said it. Very profound but short. The problem is with you. It's with you. Don't look at someone sitting next to you. It's you. You're the problem. And if you're not going to get right with the Lord, and I always say, it's better to self-destruct than be out there like those terrorists, kill everybody together. Oh, yeah. If you're going to live in that life, you know, best thing is that you just do it on your own. You shouldn't be that bad influence to our children or other people. Yes. Right? Just do it on your own. If you're a Bible-living teacher doing that, stop teaching. Unless the Lord really, you know, chastise you. Right? Yes. If you're leading anything, just don't do it. I mean, you're heaping more fire on yourself. <laughs> Figuratively, right? You're asking God for more punishment. I was like, oh man. God bought our church with his precious blood. We're standing for the King James Bible in this God-forsaken war, and this is the most precious ministry out there. And if you're, God, if you're that person who's going to bring black eye to Lord's church, bad testimony, it's better that you wise up and just say, you know what, you know, I, I just, I, Lord, you know, I, I have no intention of getting right. I'm still going to live in sin. I'm still going to love money. I'm still going to love Hollywood. I'm still going to love movie theater. I'm still going to love worldly music. I'm still going to love, you know, this premarital sex. I'm still going to love all of this, Lord. You know, but I, I know how fearful you are. I fear you. So I'm just going to stay away. I'm just going to be that, you know, person who's going to be far behind. Just, just punish me very little, right? Because religious leaders, I mean, they're going to be burning in deeper hell. Why? Because they're sending a bunch of people to hell with them, right? Yes. With the wrong teaching and doctrine. If you're offending people because of your bad testimony in our church, if you're in a leadership position or if you're older than anybody else, then you're going to have to answer to God. You know? Amen. Don't, so don't fool around with fire. Yes. Let's go to verse 9. So now you have idols other than God. Now you're following worldly statues, you know, worldly morals, worldly music, worldly everything. Verse 9, then what, what do you do? What you've been doing? Because this is the picture of us. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. Now you're doing it behind people's back. Now you're doing it secretly, right? You're like, oh, you know, honey, husband or wife, right? Or children, right? You know, let's do some gambling. But this area, there are a lot of Indian casinos in the area. We might see somebody, right? In your mind, you're already thinking that other Christians are doing the same thing. They might, you know, but they might not. Let's drive away. You know, Vegas, too much. Let's go all the way to the other side of the country. Let's go to Atlantic City, New Jersey. You know, nobody will ever find us there, right? Nobody. And what do you know? Why? One of the church members... Cousins right there. 
Obviously, he's not safe. Hey, I thought you showed me that people's photo, one of those, you know, summer camp photos, right? I thought you guys stand for, you know, separation. I thought you guys were different. No way, they live here, you know, California. No, 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 no. Man. They said they went on a vacation, but, you know, yeah, they'll never do it, you know. They teach Bible, you know. You know they teach Bible, they come to street preaching, they do all the stuff. Right. No, it's them. I use facial recognition software. <laughs> and it's right, it's them. Oh, okay, I don't know what to say. What are you gonna say? Your witness and your testimony has been blocked because of their actions. And that person, don't think that it's other, it's you. you know, it's you, you the, the way you live your life. You know, many of you, if not all of you, including myself, we need to get right with the Lord. Yes. Things that you're doing in secret, it's kind of a show up, right? All the experiments that you're doing, right? Well, you know, what's all this, you know, drug thing about, right? What's this faith thing about, right? Oh, what's this going to this wrong website about, right? You know, I mean, people don't need to know. I mean, I have, you know, fellowship with, you know, those unbelievers. You know? I mean, Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, it's okay. That's me. At the end of the day, you know, I want to witness to them. But now all you're doing is enjoying their sin together, right? Yes. You're, you're at a bar. You're at a, you know, happy hour. You're at some bunch of other stuff, right? You're at a movie theater with your worldly friends together. You're at a disco club, nightclub, you know, everything. You think that, oh, you know, I'm doing this secretly. But God already knows. You're not fooling anybody. It happened. It happened thousands of years ago already, right? People are doing it. And what's the scary part? Look at verse 9. This secretly, those things that were not right against the Lord their God, they're doing it against their God. You're doing it against the Lord Jesus Christ who's inside of you if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior. And what do they do continuously? Now, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the Tower of the Watchmen to the Fence City. Now you're worshiping, like all these man-made things now. Oh, how great is that statue of so-and-so? I know, they were really good. I don't know, maybe some, some worldly like person like Frank Sinatra, right? Oh, how great were they, right? Oh, Kobe Bryant, right? Oh, you know, all these things. Oh, yeah, you know, Washington Monument, right? Bad symbol. You're like, oh, they're great now. Why? You've been doing things secretly that you've just gone away from truth now completely. And then verse 11, you don't stop there. And they burn incense in all the high places as that the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them. Now you're going to be doing some wicked things, right? You know, all these things are involved with, you know, lust of flesh, right? Now, I mean, I, I don't preach on it too much. It's so dirty, but pornography is rampant amongst Christians, Bible believers. Yes. Yeah. You're doing it behind your wife's back. You're doing it behind your husband's back. You're saying women? Yeah, women are up there now, yes. too. And you, 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 you like it. I mean, you're actually the person who's going to be for, like, gay liberation. Yes. God forbid. You're like, you're going to be the one who's going to be always into, you know, all these perversions. Quit it. Yeah. It, as people, it actually goes down that list. It happens like that list unless you get right with the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 12. For they serve idols. Yeah, idols, right? Science and education and money. I mean, isn't, aren't, isn't that the idols of this world right now? Yes. Science, education, money, all those things. And that's what you're doing. And finally, at the end of the day, what happens? You do worse than them. That's your fruit. You become worse than the people you idolize. You do worse things than they did openly in secret. I mean, Hollywood's like, oh, you know what? I only work like six months. 
right? But your life is 365 Hollywood now. You know, it's become like almost ritual. If I want to find you, I just need to look for some movie theaters, and you're there. <laughs> some nightclubs, you're there. You know, if I want to find you listening to bad music, I just need to stop you. Hey, let me just give me what you're saying before you turn off everything. Right? That's you. You have become worse than this bell worshiping population, this heathen. Mm. Because you practice their thing. They just say it out loud. I'm unsaved. I'm heathen. I love these things. I'm on my way to hell. But you're that other worse hypocrite, right? Yes. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in King James Bible. You need to get saved from hell. But I do everything that you do. Wow. And more in secret. Yeah. At least those guys, they're too tired of it. Sometimes they just don't do it no more. Yes. But you, man, because you get so excited, you want to you know, fulfill the lust of your flesh, you constantly do it. And you have come to a point. Ask any druggies out there, right? Yes. Any fornicators out there, right? It doesn't bring the same type of pleasure or thrill like in the first time. Too. No. So you do it more and more and more and more and more and more, more, more. Yes. And later on, like, you get this disease. You get this, you know, punishment. And you're like, God, I hate you. Why'd you do this to me? You know? And that's your attitude. Why? 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 Why are you pointing out my sin? I'm just living my life. Then get out. Go somewhere where, you know, your life is not going to affect anybody. But once you're saved, you're in the army of Christ. Yes. You have to follow and abide within the word of God. But if you don't want to do it, just delist, right? Isn't that the word? Delist, but you can't, though. You're always permanently there. That's right. Or just... Just, just run away or something so that you'll be less evil than the full evil, especially if people around you, you do have some influence in their life. Probably some of you are thinking, oh, man, I didn't think this deep. I mean, how does he know all these things? It's not me. It's God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is just warning you. Thank you, Lord. And everybody. Yes. Including myself. Get your act together, get right, or else. I mean, when Lord says or else, that's scary. If you really fear the Lord, that should bring, like, tremble to your knees. Because you've been playing around with the Word of God. You've been playing around with Lord Jesus Christ. You've been playing around with the Holy Spirit. And you've been playing around with the people around you. Stop playing around, right? Yes. The devil whom you underestimated has completely taken over your life. And you don't even know it. You better get on your knees. You better get to the Lord. You better truly, truly confess your sins and get right. And live each day as a Christian warfare where you know that there's devil who I've underestimated in the past, who's my adversary, roaring lion, about to devour me. Then what do you got to do? You got to rely on Lord Jesus Christ for strength. You got to rely on the word of God. And you got to continuously, constantly pray. That's why the Bible says pray always, right? Pray without ceasing. Yes. Rejoice evermore. That's what you got to do. So it's not just a Sunday. It's not just Monday. It's not one day ordeal. It's every day, every day ordeal, every day life. Spiritual battle is every single day of your life, especially if you truly stand for the word of God, if you care for our ministry, if you want gospel to be preached, you're going to have a stronger attack from the devil. Then you better wake up or else you're going to lose to the devil. And at the judgment seat of Christ, you will not hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Don't you want to hear that? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, Christians just want to play around with you, Lord. When you explicitly said in your word, don't do it, but we tend to still do it. Just like those Israelites who started worshiping idols, following their statues, doing things in secret, same thing's happening, Lord. I pray that all of us will get right with you, truly understand devil's attack, 
truly understand the sins that are causing us to stumble and be a bad testimony for you, Lord. Help us get right, every one of us. And I pray that you will give us strength. We can't do this on our, Lord, on our own, Lord. But we can do all things through Christ with strength in us. Be the king of our heart's throne, Lord. It's enough that we have so many other things on our heart's throne. Help us get right, Lord, before it's too late. And above all, even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.